Hello everyone, and welcome back to Let's Play Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker. Last time, we defeated the pain in my hind, that motherfucking helicopter. This time is going to be another briefing file episode, but I think this one, I'm going to kick it off with checking out the other stuff in the menu, like outer ops and delivery and all this stuff, just to see these new things go away so they don't say new anymore. So I'm actually going to just start with stuff that I'm pretty sure I won't need to use, like trade. Yeah, got it. Wait, what? To trade staff, start by placing... Oh, 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 you have to put people in the, tr the room to trade. I see. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Like, versus ops. I'm not going to do any versus ops, but I'm, I just wanted to click on it to get it so it stops blinking as new. Yeah, you can host a game and whatnot. Yeah, not hosting the game right now. Didn't even know that it was going to take me to a whole other screen. Now I know. My main problem is I was just kind of kind of sick of seeing these things blink as new, and I didn't. I just don't want to see it anymore. Recruit. Let's accept a volunteer. I don't know how this works, but let's see how volunteers work. Hey yo, hey yo, volunteers. Recruit volunteers. MSF volunteer recruits are experienced veteran soldiers who will want to evaluate the true strength of MSF and Snake before you rejoin. Best them in battle to prove your clout and convince them to become your ally. Ooh. Search. Huh. Wow. I'm actually not going to do this right now, but this actually looks like other missions that you can do. Wow. Okay. I'll save this for another time. I just wanted to see what it was. I'm only checking out what these things are. I'm probably not going to do any of them right now. Except for maybe the Metal Gear Zeke thing. I might check out what that's about. I also plan on checking out this Outer Ops thing. Would you like a tutorial? Sure, let's just have the tutorial real quick. In Outer Ops, you can send units to conflict zones to participate in combat. Battles will take place as you progress time by completing main ops or extra ops missions. If your soldiers are victorious, they will gain experience and you will get, bring in a greater amount of gimp. You can also obtain rewards and new recruits from the areas you help. However, if you are defeated, soldiers will, may come back injured or not come back at all. Mechs that sustain damage in battle be repaired by temporarily removing them from the combat lineup. This concludes the tutorial. Okay. Let's go ahead and try one. Um, destroy the infantry unit 01. Team Alpha. Combat unit. Uh, I guess we're gonna need people who have. Let's just start at the top. Screw it. Combat unit. Um, um, go alligator. How many should we send on this? Is there like a thing that tells me how many I should send? Oh, there's two guys on the other team. Maybe I should send maybe three guys and a mech. What do you say, mech? I'll send in the uh, the BTR. In fact, I'll send four guys and a mech because that's how. Wait, not. Mm, I don't think I like that one. I'm gonna send. I don't really have a whole lot of good choices here. Um, I'll send Wombat. All right, looks good. Done. Team Alpha. How do I start? Oh, launch attack. Sorry. Launch attack. Go. All right. I'm gonna see how that ha how that goes. And then uh, we got delivery, where we can receive and deliver gifts to homies. Please verify the date, time of your PlayStation Three. I think everything's just fine. Um, we'll go ahead and read the tutorial. Why not? Delivery allows you to send certain weapons and recovery items to co-ops and first players via cardboard box. After the boxes are created, they are registered in the out box and sent to the end of the co-ops or versus session. Selecting free as the recipient will send the box to an undisclosed recipient via your connections with other players and co-ops that report this missions. When you receive a box from someone you don't know, you can return the favor by finding the box original center under the friends friends tab. Star sharing weapons and items with comrades is a smart way to tackle tougher missions. Tutorial over. Got it. I'm out. I'm probably never going to utilize that. And last but not least, we got Metal Gear Zeke, de or de develop Metal Gear Zeke here. Let's see how we can use some of the AI parts. So the first thing I should talk about, um, besides the tutorial, I actually, off screen between episodes, I did go back and do the mission where we fought Poopa. And I tried to get more, uh, I tried to go inside the AI and get whatever was, to there's like supposed to be a, supposed to be a tape in there or whatever. I couldn't figure out how to get the tape. Um, so instead I killed the poopa like three times and I got a bunch of AI parts from just 
popping pieces off the AI or off the poopa or pupa poopa poopa poopa. I'm gonna keep calling it the poopa. Anyway, let's learn the tutorial real quick. Metal Gear, you can develop Metal Gear Zeke, a bipedal tank. Once Metal Gear Zeke is complete, you can deploy this, this powerful new weapon on Outer Ops and other missions. Development of the Metal Gear Zeke is dependent on parts collected from all the AI weapons you encounter. The parts you can obtain include armaments such as jetpacks and additional armor. These parts vary by AI. This concludes the tutorial. So, I haven't gotten a whole lot of different kinds of parts, I don't think. But I have gotten parts. Like, I got this walk unit stuff. I, I guess I... Oh, I see. I need more scraps. I need one more of that kind. Leg parts. Power cannot be until walk unit. Okay, so I can't really do any of this until I have the correct parts. So I'm not going to worry about it right now. I'll wait till I collect more AI parts. Which means when we actually fight another AI besides the Poopa. Which is the only one I fought. Alright, so that looks like it uh, about wraps up our look around the menu, so let's go head over to Mission Selector and do the side missions that I have available to me right now that I haven't done yet. I think there was two last time I checked, but we can double check that. We got two, the item capture and the obstacle demolition. Sounds like a plan. Let's capture an item. Use C4 charges to destroy the container and retrieve all items. C4 is required for the mission. mission started. Complete the mission and proceed to the Fulton Recovery Point so we can get you back alive and well. Good Let's luck out start there. This mission off quickly. Right? Got any uh anything to go with this one? Anybody? 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 No. Okay. Well then, let's get our shit ready. We need CFO. We need some C mother F and foe. And then as for weapons, I have no idea what I'm bringing. I guess I'll bring I don't know. I'll bring the assault rifle. What the hell? Everything else doesn't really matter. I don't even... It doesn't really, uh... I have no idea what to expect here. Until I do the mission once, I don't think I get to know. Anyway, alright. Oh, 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 oh. We got a new suit also last episode. I'm gonna try it out. I also got the snake camo. I didn't mention that one, but I got the snake camo too. Um, I got the freaking sneaky suit. Where the hell does that go? Let's go... Oh, no, it's at the very top. The sneaking suit. Stealth. High camo index environment, sir. Speeds life recovery. But main wait wait. Less main weapon ammo storage. Oh, lame. That I don't like. Wait, what? How did I not? What? What happened? When I picked the sneaking suit, it unequipped all my stuff. I don't like that. Wait. Oh, I thought I had level two. That's super lame. It didn't even. I guess it's just, I'm, I'm guessing each suit you wear has its own, like, setup. I'm not even going to bring grenades. I don't even know why I had grenades on there anyway. Ration. I'll bring Stephen Curry. Um, bring my Fulton system thing. And I'll bring some coffee, mate, because that recovers my psych. And I don't think I really need anything else right now. So let's do it. Sneaky suit. Engage. Ready. I pressed circle button on accident instead of the X button. Stop pressing the wrong button, you genius. My thumb was roaming. It was roaming. Damn, are we already that high up in the episode time? Man, hopefully these missions don't take too long. Also, I'm pretty sure I don't have a ton of briefing files to go through. Mostly just Huey, but a few others. Alright, here we go. I don't know what we're doing, but we're doing it right. Alright, you. Take a nap. My Fulton shit out real quick. Do, 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 do. See ya. Remaining items. Oh, there's eight items? Wait, what are we blowing up exactly? I am confused exactly what we're doing. Recovery to helicopter is complete. Hey! Ah. Whoops. Ah. Huh. Somebody there. Ah. Nobody there. Wow, it took me four fucking shots, but I got it. Don't worry guys, I got him. Got him guys, don't worry. Alright, oh we gotta blow up these boxes. Fulton recovery Sorry, subject wrong button. confirmed on board helicopter. Alright. Nice. Now we've gotta recover those supplies. Hurry. I see. Yes. Now get over to the goal. I see what's happening. Oh, where's the goal? Wait, where's the fucking goal? Reinforcements. Proceed with 
Reinforcements. We're under attack. No, we're not. No attack. Alright, I gotta find the exit. Where the fuck's the exit? Don't you dare tell me it's like right next to there, too. Maybe it's over here? Oh, shit! Ah, where's the exit? I don't know where the exit is! It's a big orange square, where are you? Why can't I find the fucking exit? Oh, it is. It's back here. Oh, God, it's not a big orange... It... Oh, what? You know what? Screw this. I wouldn't have got caught if I knew where I was going. Now that I know where I'm going, I'm stupid for not using the map. Just, you guys can be mad at me for not using the map. That was just dumb of me. I, I, I honestly, I didn't even look at that cutscene right at the beginning, showing me exactly what I needed to do. And for some reason, it didn't hit me that I needed to just blow up the box and grab the items inside. I thought maybe it was saying I need to grab items from all over the fucking area. Not the case. I'm stupid. Just call me stupid and let's move on from it, guys. It's not a. It's not patronize me too hard for that one. Making up for it right away. With stupid stupidity. Make up for this. Make sense? Sounds good to me. All right. Cfo that shit. As you can see, because I've been doing some of the other missions again, I'm getting better at using doing things quickly instead of just fucking wandering around aimlessly sometimes. Oh shit. No, we're not. No, we're not. No, we're not. Fuck. I got the time panel. -y. Oh well. And if I'm, if I'm going to be completely honest with you guys, I actually have taken the time to do some of the old missions again to try and get S rank on them just for fun, starting from the very beginning. So I've actually redone several of the first few missions in the game just to get uh, try to get S rank. And I did get S rank on all, almost all the ones I tried, except for like target practice. Those are actually pretty hard. I have to m wait till maybe I upgrade my guns a little bit more. Anyway, this mission's done. No big deal. Other than my dumb, d dumb, d dumb, dumbness. I'll try to get an S rank next time. I, I didn't mean to get caught. I didn't know that guy was going to be looking right at me. Plus, I missed his face on my shot. I could have got him. <sighs> Still not a big fan of the square looking reticle thing for aiming, but it is the way the game is, so I'm getting used to it. And. Got an A rank. See? If I wouldn't have got caught, I probably would have got an S rank there because I did that pretty fast. Alright. Mission complete. Mission complete. Mission complete. I'm just going to go straight to the mission selector and we'll do the other mission. Then we can deal with developing or setting up any other things that need to be developed or reassigning new soldiers that we just Fultoned and all that. Let's just get the obstacle demolition done. This one is a destroy the obstacle. There's just one in Cloud Forest. And, to, oh, to clear the path. Okay, and then reach the target point. Blow up the obstacle with the C4. All right, cool. Sounds good. Clear the rubble in the Cloud Forest that's blocking our advance. Some C4 could make short work of it. If you succeed, our efforts in this area will be made that much easier. Got it. Anybody got anything else to say about it? Destroy the obstacle. You'll be using C4 for demolition. As you might imagine, it's going to make a big noise when it detonates. For your own safety, make sure you put plenty of distance between yourself and the C4 before detonating it. I feel like I've heard that before. I probably have. It, maybe it just wasn't that exact uh, wording. Anyway, Selva de la Muerte! Selva de la Muerte, huh? Forest of Death. I wouldn't want to get lost here. Sure wouldn't, but do not worry. I will be your guide. Happy to hear it. By the way, Snake, you know much about sloths? Just the name. They are amazing. Sloths spend almost all of their lives up in the trees, except for when they have to go to the bathroom. Plus, they barely eat a thing. What? How do they survive? Why do you think they are called sloths? They hardly move, so they hardly burn any energy. They are also able to maintain a low body temperature, lowering their metabolism further and allowing them to survive on very little. Wouldn't that make it easier for them to get picked off by predators? They stick to the trees, helping them blend in and stay out of sight. They say there are even some sloths that grow moss when they reach a certain age, like some sort of fairy tale forest hermit, huh? I knew a great old sniper once. Guess he was even more in tune with nature than I thought. 
old sniper. What are you talking about? I know what you're talking about. He's literally old as fuck, and he was a sniper, and I punked his ass in Metal Gear Solid 3. Fucking the end. Anyway, we won't get on that subject right now. Let's just move on with the mission. Let's make sure we got shit ready. Same shit we had last mission. Sounds good. Let's do it. No snake this time? Oh, that's bad. That's bad. I don't like that. That I don't like. Well, shit, if we can't use snake, who can we use? I just sent all my best soldiers to the motherfucking mission. I guess we'll use yak. Yakety yak. Don't talk back. <coughs> uh, no, I'll use bluegill. Why the hell not? Bluegill it is. We are going to use the same shit, though. Obviously, we need some C4 in the pack. I'm guessing we can't use the sneaky suit. Oh, we could. Eh, screw it. I don't care. If I can't use snake, I give less of a crap of preparation other than what I need. Lame that I can't use snake. But it is what it is. It is what it is what it is, and it will be how it is, because I can't help it. If that makes any sense at all. Anytime I think of Sloth these days, I always think of the Pokemon slack off cause he's cause he's a sloth and he slacks off alright so we got a bunch of sneaky bastards in this one that are all dressed in jungle fatigues 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 so I'm not too concerned just pop some fools I don't see any of them yet oh there he is oh, doink someone there I like how they say something to give themselves away. Dumbasses. We could fault in them, though. Now, is there a guy behind this tree, too? Okay. Definitely know there's a guy behind a tree at some point. We saw him on the, on the mission is beginning screen. The opening cutscene for the mission. There's definitely a dude behind here. And I'll beam. See ya! Alright, anybody else? No more fools behind these trees. Alright, there's probably one behind this tree. Maybe? Recovery no? Subject confirmed on okay. board helicopter. No, one behind here. Oh. Oh, this is a multiple area mission. Oh jeez. We haven't had one of these for a side mission in a while. In fact I gotta go two way two uh two screens. I gotta go I gotta move a little quicklier then. I got I'm on a time limit here, buddies. We're on a strict eight minute eight minute? Eight yeah, eight minute time limit. Only got six and a half left. Alright, let's get this. This is basically the same mission we already did. This fucker right here. Done. Done. Oh shit. Fucker. Nothing here. helicopter Damn it. My only goal right now is just to finish the mission. I can give a shit about getting an S rank at the moment. Wait, is this the right way? No, not the right way. Gotta go this way quick. We're running out of time. We're running out of time. No, we're not. We still have. We still have. Oh, I lost like a whole minute from getting caught. Holy shit! I just realized. I gotta pay attention. Gotta pay attention to these things when you lose a bunch of time. Gotta pay attention. All right. This should be the screen. That, the last screen though, where we gotta blow up. Would blow up the. Oh, this is it right here. It's right in my way. Right in my way. But some C4 should make sure work it. of it. Okay, you're done with that area. Done. For the goal. Done. Awesome. Hey, that was great. I didn't realize that was going to be the end of the mission. Okay, cool. Do. That mission's not too bad then. If as long as you know where all those little those little bastards are hiding, you can just pop them all before they see you. Easy, easy peasy lemon squeezy. Bunch of beezies. All right. Cool. Nice. Nice work, bro. Nice work. A rank. Even though I got caught like 85 times. Got an A rank. Alright. Let's hit up the rest of these briefing files and that'll wrap up this episode. But first, Mother Base, real quick. I guess I don't have to do this now, but I guess I should. Eh, if we're going to kick off next episode with the next story mission, I better make sure everything's already all set up like anything that we finished developing. Like... Level 2 support marker, and level 1 strike marker, and uh, people leveling up and stuff. And uh, we got our... Wait, what? Units may now be recalled from outer ops. Okay. Cool. 
Uh, do we actually have to go to Outer Ops to get him back? Let's let's check that out real quick. Team Alpha has returned. View yes. View the results. Uh, Autoplay. What does that even mean? I got a trophy for Outer Ops, by the way. Auto. What? Wait. What are we auto playing? Oh, is this like what? Huh? What is happening? Um, own the flying fish. Owned Bongo. Victory is mine. Wow, that was super easy. MSF wins. Cool. All right, it's cool. Um, people went up levels and stuff. That's always good. Cardboard box times three, or cardboard tank. Whoa. Combat ready love box. Sounds good. <laughs> Alright, well, I'm not going to do another one of those at the moment. Uh, I might set one up before the next episode, but for now, let's reassign all our new people, get everything starting developing and all that. Let's just get all this set up. Nothing new, ready for R&D. We do have some stuff in here. Here's that Fim 43. I don't even have enough GIMP. Holy crap. Really? You can have... Oh, you can't have negative GIMP. I was about to say, you can have negative GIMP, but... No, you can't. If you have negative GIMP, you don't have enough GIMP. Well then, somehow we need to get some more GIMP. In the meantime, we'll develop all our other shit. We've got plenty of other shit to work on. A lot of this stuff takes a lot of GIMP now, so we gotta only do a little bit at a time. That's fine. We can we can live with that. Uh, let's hit up the... Uh, Fulton System Level 3. Hell yes. And that's all I got enough for right now. That's fine. Alright. Let's get to the rest of those briefing files before we got no no time left on the episode. What do you say? What do you say? Hopefully we can get through Hueys quickly. I'm just gonna go straight to Hueys and then we'll worry about anybody else who has any later. Go straight for Huey. Huey Louie Dewey Dewey. We gotta go through Eoshui. Nuclear deterrence, here we go. The theory. Let's speak in hypotheticals for a minute. Say you wanted to make a clone of yourself. A clone? Paramedic had the same idea. It's science fiction. I'm just hypothesizing here. Okay, not a clone then. You have any kids? Nope. Wife? Uh, never been tied down. Okay then. So, we're still talking hypotheticals. Say you had a son who'd inherited your genes. Someone with the same combat abilities as you. Would you challenge him to a fight? Mm, not to sound cocky, but I wouldn't want to do that. No telling who'd survive. I'll bet. You picked up on the Pupa 5000's combat patterns in seconds. Only with your advice, Doc. Well, if anybody could learn to do it just by listening, it'd be easy. But you... You're a born soldier. Yeah, you must have been born with genes geared for combat. Soldier genes, if you will. Genes geared for combat? I don't care how advanced their research is. You can't blame genes for everything. Blame genes? You think it's funny? What? You think genes have nothing to do with this body I was born with? I, I don't know. Look, that fear of facing someone of equal ability in combat, imagine that on a strategic scale. That's the concept of nuclear deterrence. The idea is, when all sides are armed with the destructive power of nuclear weapons, They'll avoid nuclear war in order to prevent mutual annihilation. Doesn't sound all that sophisticated to me. Exactly. It's so simple in principle. But because it's so simple, whether or not it works properly depends on the people involved. In that sense, what we're looking at now is a malfunction in deterrence theory. Coldman. You got it. Please, Snake, don't let deterrence die. It's funny that they talk about the whole genes and clones in that first part of that conversation because very much so solid liquid solidus snake hello just saying peace walker projects the aim of the peace walker project is to achieve robust nuclear deterrence across central america by deploying a new nuclear weapon system along the caribbean coast peace walker is also the name of the system itself <sighs> a nuclear weapon named peace I can just see the look on Kaz's face. So why exactly does this new system need legs in the first place? Because it's a walker, an unmanned weapon moving under its own power and capable of launching a deterrent strike from anywhere. That's the whole idea behind Peace Walker. 
Yeah, okay, I already knew that. That's not new info for me. Mobile Nuclear Launch Platform. The MNLP. The reason Peace Walker is a mobile nuclear weapon system is to maximize its potential as a nuclear deterrent. How so? If need be, Peace Walker can stay constantly on the move so that the adversary can't pinpoint its position. That allows it to avoid preemptive enemy strikes. So you're saying it keeps the retaliation card in play? Coldman likes to brag about it in this way. Like a land-based version of an SSBN. And there's another reason for them to be mobile. Peace Walker also has a self-destruct function. Of course it does. So we can blow the fuck up anything or everywhere or evidence of it ever existing. Why would Peace Walker need a self-destruct function? You saw it, didn't you, Snake? That sphere on Peace Walker's head? Yeah. That's a hydrogen bomb. What? You're telling me that thing's a thermonuclear device? Do they have any idea what kind of destruction that thing would cause? I know, it's crazy. I mean, even overkill has its limits. If it's strategic value they want, they could have gone with something smaller. It's like they want a weapon on par with Russia's Tsar Bomba. This arms race is running way out of control. It's an evolutionary dead end. A saber-toothed tiger. You can't load a warhead that big on a missile, of course. And no strategic bomber could carry it. That's where Peace Walker comes in. So, it waltzes into enemy territory carrying a hydrogen bomb and blows itself up. Christ. <laughs> Christ! <laughs> yeah, sounds fucked up to me too. Sorbomba! What is it? The biggest nuclear warhead ever actually detonated was the Soviet RDS-220, nicknamed Tsar Bomba. It had an estimated yield of 57 megatons, 10 times as much power as all the explosives used throughout World War II. The test took place on October 30, 1961, above Novaya Zemlya. The explosion is believed to have created a fireball over two miles in diameter. Can you believe that? Like a miniature sun. The explosion was seen as far off as Finland, 600 miles away. And some people even reported windows shattering. The shock wave traveled three times around the Earth. Three times? Peace Walker is armed with a massive hydrogen bomb, even more destructive than Tsar Bomba. It can sneak into enemy territory, lie low, and in the event of an enemy nuclear strike, detonate itself in retaliation. And the locomotion system that lets it do that my research. Snake, those legs were supposed to make my dream come true. Now they're about to jump the fence of nuclear deterrence. You have to stop them. I'll apply all my energy into developing weapons and equipment to help you do it. Sounds like a deal. Got it. Kinda effed up, but got it. Oops, no, 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 well, for one thing, because it can't be manned. Peace Walker's designed to enter enemy territory and blow itself up, if necessary. You can't put a person inside a weapon that could blow at any time, can you? So we equipped it with an AI instead. That's... strangely humane of you. And besides, Peace Walker was designed as a bipedal weapon system. You can't imagine how hard it shakes when it walks. It'd turn a man into mush. Plus, when launching a nuclear missile, it has to perform ballistic calculations in real time. See? Because it's always moving. Hold on. If that's all it does, then a high-performance computer ought to do the job. It doesn't need intelligence. That's a very good point, Snake. Which brings me to the real reason. Peace Walker needs AI to make decisions regarding nuclear retaliation. It's what ensures perfectly mutual assured destruction. I've heard all this before. You want a war between machines? We never actually launched the first nuke, of course. It's strictly a counterattack system. Only a politician could make such an illogical decision as starting a nuclear war. Conversely, if an adversary launches a nuke at us, the AI will not fail to retaliate. Therefore, the adversary can't launch. The AI guarantees it. Even so, launching nukes without authorization? Boomer captains have the authority to launch if land communications are cut off. It's the same principle. Not even the captain of a boomer can make that decision alone. The way I heard it, that's the only situation where insubordination is allowed. 
Only because humans are imperfect. That's Coldman's line of thinking. You're saying that machines don't make mistakes? That's a myth. Worse than that, it's blind faith. We wouldn't put our faith, our fate, into the hands of any ordinary machine. That's what the AI is for. The decision to launch a retaliatory strike requires high-level judgment. You have to take into account not only the state of the war, but the entire world. And sometimes, you need to make a guess based on incomplete information. Huh. You think an AI can do all that? Yeah. At least, Dr. Strangelove does. Maybe we need to talk to this Dr. Strangelove. How do you fight a Peace Walker? Peace Walker is fitted with several close-range weapons. We'd also plan for it to be able to enter enemy territory and self-detonate. Wonderful. What exactly are we dealing with here? Well, the flamethrowers, for one thing. One in the front and one in the rear. Then there are the S-mines. They're like cluster bombs. It scatters them from its leg hatches. If you see those open, you better clear out quickly. And finally, the rockets. These can travel quite a distance, so stay sharp. On the other hand, it can't fire them from too close. But then again, there are those flamethrowers. It can also use its legs as weapons against any infantry on the ground. Ouch. But remember, Peace Walker technically isn't complete. With just the reptile pod, it can only perform relatively simple maneuvers. They've got certain quirks, too. What's more, look carefully, and you should be able to predict which attack is coming next. Well, all this will be useful, more useful information when I actually fight the Peace Walker. Right now, I'm probably not going to remember all that, other than it has a shit ton of weapons to watch out for. Okay, but why does Peace Walker need to walk on two legs? I think treads would be good enough. You'd be wrong. As you know, the terrain in Central America is rugged and complex, especially along the Caribbean coast of Costa Rica. You've got jungles, swamps, mountains, and the only way to get across all that terrain, no matter how rugged, is on legs. Yeah, but wouldn't it be tough to cross a swamp, even on legs? It wasn't easy, that's for sure. The reason we picked Costa Rica as a proving ground is because we can test it on every type of terrain. Well, that makes sense then, doesn't it? The fake Peace Walker project, what does that mean? This Peace Walker project the CIA's talking about. You believed in it, huh? Yeah, I believed. Actually, maybe I just wanted to believe. What do you mean? Here's how Coldman explained it. Peace Walker's a weapon for peace. One to ensure true nuclear deterrence. It'd be the anchor to bring stability to Central America. He told me, the nuclear weapon system you've built will never be used. It will forever stand vigil as an icon of peace. And to achieve that, he needed my bipedal locomotion technology. To be honest, I was flattered. Flattered? Wouldn't you be? My colleagues in the scientific community have never taken me seriously. They told me bipedal locomotion was a pipe dream, that it'd never amount to anything. It was the first time anybody recognized my work. How could I not be happy? And besides, it was my chance to surpass my father. To create nukes for peace. Or so I thought, anyway. But Coldman's really going through with it. Yeah. Makes perfect sense, really. No one would give the project any notice unless they could prove that an unmanned system is capable of launching a nuke. Gotta prove that your shit works. Too bad proving your shit works actually means a lot of people gotta die. Why is Coldman gonna launch a nuke? If all he wants to do is prove the AI retaliation system works, he doesn't need to put a live warhead on it. I agree. He could demonstrate the system by launching the missile alone, without a warhead. I asked him the same thing at first. He said there was no point in using a dummy missile that it had taken actual nuclear launch to deter potential enemies. Launching the real deal gives him a leg up in negotiations with Langley. That's what he's really after. Exactly. He said, fuck fake missiles. He's going real or nothing at all. Soviet research on bipedal locomotion. I based the bipedal locomotion technology used in Peace Walker on Soviet research. Actually, I'll be honest with you. I stole most of the basic ideas behind it. Soviet? Bipedal? You mean Granin? You know him? 
Yeah. I met him at his lab in Russia. He helped me out a little bit. You met him? What were you... He was head of the Granin Design Bureau, creator of countless Soviet weapons. I'd hit a wall in my research at the time. Granin's ideas solved nearly all my problems. Uh, there's nothing unusual about using somebody else's work to further your own research, is there? As long as you cite it, yeah. But I wasn't in a position to do that. His research was classified at the highest level. Soviet research, no less. So, you used it without telling anybody? I wanted to show up my colleagues for once. The ones who never took me seriously. But you reap what you sow. Coldman seized on that vulnerability. Told me if I quit the project, he'd expose my larceny. <laughs> he had you by the balls, Doc. <laughs> had you by the balls, Doc. Let's learn a little bit more about Gronin. I mean, we learned some stuff about Gronin back in Metal Gear Solid 3. I remember him. How'd you get your hands on Gronin's research? That was also Coldman. He used his agency contacts to get a hold of it. Uh, giving you stolen information, then using it to blackmail you. Damn. I knew it was Gronin's work the minute I saw it. See, I'd been corresponding with him for a while. Corresponding? Letters. Between scientists doing the same kind of research. He always complained that nobody understood his ideas on bipedal locomotion. Ah, so you're the American friend he was talking about. Yep. Obviously, he didn't write a word about the technology in his letters. Except for one time. If by chance anything should happen to me, I entrust my research to you. Better that than handing it over to these ignorant so-called scientists. <laughs> Sounds like him, all right. Then one day, his papers actually came. It wasn't hard for me to imagine what had happened to him. I felt it was my duty to carry on his work after him. And also... What? I thought maybe combining his technology with mine could be a way to bring East and West together. Like the docking of Apollo and Soyuz. It'll never make the history books. And it's still not a reason to plagiarize. You're right. You're absolutely right. I never had the courage to tell the truth, that's all. I always looked for excuses to cover it up. Until now. Huh? You told me everything. You're no longer a coward. Your cowardice is over. Celebrations are in order. Why is there so many left? Holy crap. Metal Gear. Huh? What about it? You mumbled that when I first explained about Peace Walker. I'm curious what it meant. Exactly what it says. Uh, Metal Gear. Gronin coined the term. Gronin did? He thought of his technology as the metal gear that meshes infantry with artillery. I like the sound of that. Metal Gear. It's got a nice ring to it. Better than an outright lie like Peace Walker, anyway. Yeah. Better than yeah, that, yeah. Let's hear about this Shagohad. Remember that shit? Those papers the CIA gave you. Was there any data on the Shagohad in there? Shagohad? A nuclear tank that launches IRBMs. It competed against Gronin's system for approval. Oh, the thing with the rockets. Designed by a guy named Sokolov, right? <laughs> What's so funny? No, I was just remembering some of the commentary Gronin added to the Shagohad papers. You should have seen the way he badmouthed it. It was too conservative, too ugly. Uh, I can imagine. He was so angry when he wrote that, he smeared up the ink. And you know how shoddy the paper is over there to begin with. I'll bet. That's Gronin, all right. Imagine accelerating the launcher itself to 300 miles an hour to extend the range of an IRBM. As stupid as it sounds, it's a hell of a concept. Who but the Soviets would think of using a tank as the first stage of a rocket? I actually took a cue from the Shagahad when I developed the pupa. That hovercraft thing? You stole that one too? Give me a little credit. I only borrowed the concept. The technology is original. As it turned out, hover technology wasn't enough to handle all the terrain in Central America. It relied too much on brute force. But the Shagohad was a major threat. That thing could corner like you wouldn't believe. Built pretty tough, too. You sure know a lot about it. Uh, it almost did me in. I couldn't forget it if I tried. Did you in? So you were the one who took it down. Wow! You really are amazing. I didn't do it alone. 
No, seriously, thank you. We might not be here today if they'd begun mass-producing that thing. Then again, they're hard at work now miniaturizing nuclear warheads. Pretty soon, they won't even need an accelerated launcher like the Shagahad. Great. That means they're that much closer to being able to launch from anywhere in the world. Great. I knew the pupa was based on the Shagohad. I could just tell by the design. Awesome that they uh, basically confirmed that. All right, last but not least, let's do the Basilisk. Chico called Peace Walker the Basilisco. Basilisco? Oh, right, Spanish. <laughs> That's funny. I once used the code name Basilisk for the Peace Walker platform myself. What for? The class of lizards called Basilisks can walk atop any type of terrain. In a pinch, they can even stand up on two legs and run across water. Perfect name for a system that can walk anywhere in Central America, right? Plus, there are the legends. What legends? The basilisks of legend were highly venomous creatures. There's a story told by the ancient Romans. A knight slew a basilisk by piercing it with his spear. The creature's poison seeped up the spear and killed both horse and rider. Remind you of anything, Snake? Nuclear deterrence. Bingo. Kill it, and you die along with it. Your hands are bound. I wanted Peace Walker to be like that. You should know that people aren't that rational. Sometimes people do things that don't make sense, even when they know they're going to die. Or maybe it's because of that. Maybe you're right. But that's exactly what I don't understand. It's because not all humans are created equally, if you know what I'm saying. And I don't all have the same mindset. We all have different brains. Anyway, I don't think we're going to get through the rest of his, uh, his, uh, I don't know, I don't know. His briefing files today. I know there's not a whole lot left in here, but I think I might save them for next time because I'm pretty sure other people have some new ones as well. Yeah. Pause. Doesn't have any right now. No. Oh, it looks like, uh, yeah, it looks like even Miller has some new ones. Anyway, I'm going to save those for the next briefing file episode. So in the next episode of Let's Play Middle Gear Solid Peace Walker, we will head for the lab and make sure we bring the ID card with us. So I will see you guys then. Peace!